So welcome, Liz, to Escape the Rat Race for Radio. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. Thanks good. for having me today. That's all right. It almost feels like it was only yesterday that we were talking to one another, right? <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah. So we caught up briefly yesterday at WeWork before the Escape the Rat Race meetup. And uh, I'm really pleased to have you on the show today to share your story. And would you mind telling everyone listening what business you're currently in and what specifically that involves day to day? Yeah, okay. Um, so I help female entrepreneurs set up businesses online. So women that are maybe have been lawyers or mothers that are looking to go back into business, um, pe- women like that, and they want to, maybe if they're a lawyer and they want to sidestep and become a resilience coach, or they're a mother and they're maybe wanting to write a book and they want to get their presence online. So it's trying to get your expertise online. So I help them with doing the photo shoots, doing their website, helping them with content, their branding, their logos, things like that. So basically, so these women don't have to be like, oh, okay, where do I have to get my photos done? Where do I have to get my website done? I'm not quite sure about my content. So people come to me and I do everything for them. So Sounds well, awesome. <laughs> So let's roll straight into part one then of today's interview, which is where you were. So do you mind letting us know, Liz, where you used to work and what you used to do? Okay, so I work for a fashion designer called Anna Schultz, and it's a plus size designer clothing label. So it would, I would, I worked there for 10 years. And when I started, it was meant to be in fashion design. And I just started that, but the internet took off. So as I was starting, I was helping more on the web shop side of things. And so I ended up designing the website, doing all the online marketing, all the emails we sent out to customers, and then also helping with the photography and assisting on that. So it was quite a small company. So I got to do lots of things, which has really helped enable my job now, what I'm doing. And at the beginning of starting that job, it wasn't what I wanted to do, but I think as everybody knows, your sort of career sometimes takes a tangent, a different tangent, and that's what happened with me. Great. And can you describe at what point you realised that you didn't want to work for somebody else any longer? And what were the first steps that you took to start changing your situation? Okay, so that was about two, two and a half years ago now. I read a book, uh, it was my first personal development book um, called You Are a Badass. And I just remembering, wow, I can do whatever I want to do. And I think that was the first lightning bolt moment for me. And um, shortly after that, I did a course, online course with this coach. And I set up a business doing selling inspirational phone cases. And from there, that's sort of my journey. I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more about that. But that's sort of how I first started it, doing something different while I was still at work. Yeah. So how did you settle exactly then upon a decision as to exactly what you were going to focus on for your business to generate additional income enough so that you could yeah so that's what that's what i'm saying so i did the phone case business for about a year and i got quite good press i was in cosmo magazine and everything but it wasn't really making me lots of money enough to leave my job and i was like this isn't really what i wanted to do but what i really loved about doing it was i liked doing the photography for it i liked doing you know doing the the styling and you know I had people helping me with it but when I was doing it I really enjoyed doing it and creating the website so then I thought well there's something in that that I enjoy doing that so then a year ago now I started looking for a coach and when I was looking for my coach she um all of the coaches online I just didn't like their websites and I thought I'm sure they're good at their job but I didn't really like how they were coming across online and that's when my aha moment was like I can help these women with their websites do their photography design their websites and that's going to make me money and I'm going to do something that I want to do and I love doing so that was that was it for me in yeah a year ago so so what were some of the parameters that you set for yourself Liz so that you knew exactly when was the right time to quit and can you remember your escape the rat race date yes I've probably got two dates really for that I um I had my first life coaching with this woman in um, a year ago now, and she, we sort of devised this, this is what you're going to do, this is what sets your heart on fire. And, and she was like, you need to leave your job. And I've been in this job for ten, nearly 10 years then, and I was so frightened and scared. I was like, I can't, I can't, you know, I've got no money. 
I'm in debt. I, I just can't do it. And um, we had all of our phone call packages. I saw her in person. And then just randomly out of the blue, a little few weeks later, she met, met, called me and was like, are you, have you left your job yet? And I was like, no. And she was like, are you happy? And I'm like, no. Do you want to do this? I'm like, yes. She's like, you need to leave your job. And I think it was, sometimes your friends might say it to you, you might say it to yourself, but definitely if you have coaching and there's somebody on the outside saying you can do it, look at these success stories, just do it. And that was it. So I was like, that was in, I think, October the 12th or something. And I was like, I'm going to do it. So a week or two weeks later, I handed my notice in. And my last day was on December the 22nd. And that was the end of a decade in the same job. And I just didn't, I knew I didn't want to start my 11th year working for somebody else. And it just, I didn't have a client or anything. It, it was just the sheer resilience that I'm going to do this it's going to happen yeah I'm myself so yeah and we spoke yesterday didn't we sometimes when you just take that leap of faith then things just kind of manifest and, and crop yeah. up and and you had a situation like that as well didn't you where kind of things just kind of fell in place because you took that leap of courage yeah and i think it's the universe you know shortly after that i got um you know i was so confident this was going to happen i had a little money windfall came my way because i was like i don't need to worry it's happening so it did and then all of these things fall into place. And I think if you don't jump, then what's, what, you know, you're just going to be unhappy in that job. And if you jump, you're going to have to get another job, a part-time job, you know, if it doesn't work out, but just make sure it does, you know? Yeah. And I, I, I just want to add to that for people listening, because I, I think it's worth a precursor to say, hey, you know, make sure that you are making the right decision for you, because just jumping and not having any income and not knowing where that's coming from, if that's going to put family at risk, you know, jeopardy and, and things like that. Single. Nobody relies on me but me. You yeah. Know? yeah. Worst thing could happen. I move back home. Yeah, that's yeah. just what my parents would really like. They're thirty plus. Stories. <laughs> and I did, I, you know, the same. It's a very similar story to me. I, I quit my job before Christmas, and uh, you know, I'd had enough. And I had not built the business. I had not built a business. I just had some savings, which I knew could keep me going for a few months. And then I was hoping that the business bad by that point would be generating an income. So you know, I certainly don't advocate for people just hey, quit your job. And, and it will all work out okay. So um, for some, it's the right decision. Yeah, for sure. And I think like when I was getting my advice from my coach, she said, you know, I don't say that to everybody. There's this one woman, she just wanted to leave. And I'm like, don't leave your job. Just stay there for a bit longer. And I think with me and my circumstances, it was just, I couldn't move past. I couldn't do what I needed to do in that job. And it was something with my mind, mindset and everything. So yeah. I don't say everybody should do it either. But for me, it was the right decision. That's right. And that's, and that's where the power of having a mentor and a coach really comes in because you've got someone with experience that you can speak to. And you often can't have those kind of conversations with your family and your friends. So you need no, you, an outside person. You, you do need an outside person. And you also need their belief in you and also to help you with pricing. Because I think you don't, you, you know, when you first start your, if you're offering your service, you're like, oh, I maybe charge this much. I've got my, you know, my coach is like, no, you're worth this much. You charge this much. Because I was going to offer my package for a certain price. And they were like, no, you're offering quality and people want it. And um, so I up my price and I've had, you know, plenty of clients that have, felt what I'm offering is really worthwhile. So I think that's another thing that they help you with your confidence in pricing as well. Yeah, yeah, really good tip there as well. So moving swiftly on to part two then. So where you are now, Liz. So remind us, how long has it been now since you quit the rat race? Six months. Okay. Uh, yeah, six months and five days. Right. And can you yeah. share with us three of your biggest realizations that you've had since transitioning from being an employee to becoming a business owner? Okay, well, the first one would be you don't get a steady paycheck. That's like, you know, pretty given. That's the, the thing with being an entrepreneur. You know, you're not having each month the same salary coming in, which it's exciting because then you've got to find, you know, you can, you can have big windfalls too, but then sometimes you've just got to save and that's one thing. And then also that it's quite lonely. You're not in an office with lots of other people. Um, and then... 
the third thing I would say that you're not you, you know you're in this environment you know you, you're interacting socially but also you're just you you're not exercising you're not getting out as much maybe you know things are a bit things like you know you might not be putting on the clothes that you need to when you know because you're just being oh, I'm just at home so you just you know that's something that I fell into a little bit at the beginning so I, I make sure that I try and have meetings and stuff outside of the house and that I work some days from different studios I would say you know if you can't afford it get a we work or a membership somewhere so you're in this high vibration sort of atmosphere yeah yeah great points and and things that you you don't necessarily think of when you quit your job and you think hey i'm going to work from home it's going to be great i'm going to have all this like freedom but actually working from home can have its own challenges because you're literally rolling out of bed and you need that separation from home life and work life and it's so easy yeah at the early stage of becoming an entrepreneur and a business owner where the two just get really blended together and there's no separation. Yeah. yeah. Great. So what do you love most about having your own business, Liz? Okay. So freedom. I know we discussed that yesterday. That's like the big word that everybody uses, but it's true. Um, you know, last week I just thought I'm going to, I went to Wales to visit my gran. We went on a mini holiday. I saw my mum and dad. I went and saw my friend and then I went to an inspirational event in Somerset, but I was able to just do whatever I wanted to do, but still being in the vibration of work and like emailing and stuff, but not tied to a desk. So that for me is just fantastic that I can, you know, for half of my day, I might go and have a walk around the park, but then I work really late in the evenings and I like working at the weekend sometimes. So I might take a day off in the week, just whatever I fancy doing really, as long as I get the work done. And um, talking about, you know, what don't you realize that you're going to be on your own? Well, that's also a plus because I feel like one of my goals was I want to make more business friends and connect with people. So people would say I'm an extrovert, but I'm also a bit of an introvert. I like my own space. I like being at home on my own sometimes, but it's made me go outside and meet new people. You know, one of the ways that I've met you is through um, a meetup group that I've gone to where I was like, I really want to meet interesting women. And I met a lady there that knows, that knows you. And it's all those connections really that have been really, really nice. And they're on the wavelength that you're on because when you're on this journey, all of your friends, you love them all, but they just don't, they might not quite get it. And you want to talk to somebody about, you know, if you're going to invest lots of money in yourself in a personal development course, your friends aren't going to understand that or realize that because it's, it's not a holiday, it's not a car it's you're putting money in yourself and um but your business friends get that and then again talking about the study income with the salary that's a plus as well because you can get really big windfalls when you're um working for yourself you might have a really great month and then you can go and do something like travel like one of the things i wanted to do was travel so i can then go away i went to thailand back in march or april which i never would have done my old job but had a really great month and I did some work while I was away and yeah, so that's, that would be mine. Yeah, I like it. So it, it's, it's creating the business really around the lifestyle that you want to lead. And for many yeah. people, it's not about having lots and lots of employees and, you know, multi millions of pounds. It's just enough to cover all of your basic needs, your, your, your living expenses, or I sometimes call it your survival figure. And, uh, and then, as you say, just being able to take time off whenever you want, visit friends and travel. So I love to hear that, Liz. That's awesome. So part three, where you want to get to. So did you set yourself any goals or targets when you decided to leave your job? And uh, have you reached them yet? Um, yes, I think one of, one of my goals was that I would like to be booked up three months in advance so every three months you know that's when i've got two or three clients that I work with a month and that would be my goal so that's happened a few times that you know since i've started i've had a few you know a couple of clients a month and then there's a quieter month and but other things come along which are interesting too so that's one but i think people might have a big goal when it's um you know, if you're a product, you know, you're like, I'm, one of my big goals is that I want to be stocked in every John Lewis or something like that. When you're working for yourself, my goal, 
yeah I'd love a big community or something big to happen but I don't know where it is and from doing my um my phone case of business you know two years ago has led me to here I'm really happy where I am now and I want to do that for a year or two and you know then be booked up for six months but then I'd like to see what happens next I'm really open to these opportunities and I feel like big things are going to happen but they don't need to happen right now I'm happy with the journey you know this is yeah. pretty ama amazing what I'm doing already really so. yeah now well that leads nicely into the next question Liz which is do you feel like you've got greater potential to achieve your life goals now that you have more control over oh, your time 100 percent. I can you know, I always thought I wanted to live in London. I'm really happy here um, right now. But if I had a job in my industry, you know, I'd always probably have to be in London or commutable. But, but now I'm really excited and open to the fact that I could move to Cornwall if I wanted to for six months. Or I could move wherever I want to be. Or I can go travel. I can do all of these things. And it's just things that you can't do when you work for somebody else. It's just so free and also you know you can you have the potential you were saying the money you know that you can get your main things you've got your money to cover everything but i want to do that but i want to like soar i want to be making money that i could never make in my old job you know because i'm not saying that's a driving force but of course i do want to do well financially and i, I just couldn't do that in my old job there's yeah. sort of a, a cap yeah on. yeah and it, so and it's your own potential that's your cap in your yeah. vision so. and we talk regularly at escape the rat race you know it, it's about shifting your mindset from an employee to an entrepreneur and it's only when you start taking those steps when you start really really throwing yourself into it and actually doing it that you realize what a shift that is when you're stuck yeah. in a day job you really just you know it, you have such a different mentality and when you learn the rules of business when you learn about entrepreneurship it really opens your eyes to so much more yeah so, final question for you liz what's the one most important thing that you believe will help you continue your success over the next 12 months Okay, so I was thinking about that earlier, and I think it is, it's a two thing, it's a positive mental attitude, and just, you know, like attracts like, and if you're saying, you know, whatever your thing might be, I don't have any clients, I'm never going to get any clients, or this didn't work, and it's never going to work, I'm never going to get better, it is just having that mindset where you're like, I've already got all of my clients that I need. They're all coming to me. The great good, you know, and it, that's with the personal development. I just strongly believe in that and just keep on going, keep on going. And it's the resilience of having the positive mindset. Yeah. You know, I know you might get knocked down, but just keep on coming back to that and you'll, you'll do fine. Mm -hmm. Or hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> So final words from you, Liz, for anyone listening right now, they're squashed up on that train on their way to work or maybe stuck in the traffic jam and they really want to do something different with their lives, but perhaps something's holding them back, something like fear. What would you say to them? I would say just start, just start. You know, I started my phone case thing. It wasn't really what I wanted to do, but if I hadn't have done that, I wouldn't be where I am now and I've left my job. So, you know, when they did a survey with, you know, elderly people in a home, I, I read somewhere that they didn't say they, they regretted what they did, they regretted what they didn't do. And I think if you're scared, you know, sometimes things are scary. You know, I've done a few things recently that have been pretty scary. One of them being this, maybe, you know, this is the first time I've done something like this. But if you don't start, you know, you just get better and better at it. So just, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Liz. It's been okay. fantastic speaking to you. You've been a wonderful escapee on the show today. And I wish you all the best of success with your business moving Thank forward. Thank you very much. I'll see you very soon. Thank you, Liz. Okay. Bye, Christian. Bye.